Hi, I'm Carl Lauren. I'm in Dandridge, Tennessee here. And uh, today what we're going to do is talk about the short shot. Uh, if it's done with an 8 or 9 iron, 7 iron, I call it a chip. If it's done with a wedge, I call it a pitch. Uh, generally speaking, uh, all, there's two aspects to this discussion. The one aspect is how do, you, how do you know what club to use and what shot to play? The next, uh, next aspect is how do you play it mechanically? Addressing the first aspect, uh, you want to put keep the ball on the ground as much as possible. For this reason, when you're off the green, 5, 10, 15, 20 yards, you want to land the ball a third of the way on the green and let it roll two-thirds of the way to the pin. And you want to use the club that will deliver that shot. Uh, if, you, if, if you have a real long ways for the ball to run and you're off the off the green, you may not want to carry even a third of the way, like 50 or 60 feet off, and you're only a 50 foot the pin's 50 or 60 feet back, and you're only five feet off. You want to just maybe just land it a few feet on the green and let it roll all the way back. So that, it wouldn't be a third then, but it's a third generally. The reason why it's a third is you don't want to land it just on the front of the green because you may under hit it a little bit, hit the fringe, and kill the shot. So you get you build in a little margin of error, a third of the way on, two thirds roll. You use the club that does that. The first thing you do is visualize the shot that you want to hit. And after a little practice, you'll know what club will do that. And that's what tells you what club to use. I always carry four or five clubs down in my hand to a short shot. I get down there, I visualize the shot, I pick the club that'll do it, and I, and I hit the shot. Uh, basically speaking on this shot, it's a left-sided delivery shot. And uh, that's for right-handed players. Uh, before I get into the mechanics, I just want to tell you four, four situations that will make you mechanically not sound. Uh, and, the, and it also supports the reason why you have to visualize the shot. When visualizing the shot, it will put, it's like going to the movies and it'll, it'll tell you about how far to take the club back to hit that shot. And if you take it back further than that, you're going to decel coming through and your right hand will beat you. If you take it, and if you take it back not far enough to hit the shot, you'll jump at it and your right side will beat you. If you take it back too slow, you'll jump at it with your right to get power. And if you take it back too fast, you'll sense you've got too much power. Your left side will slow down and your right side will beat you. So all four of those situations will get you to hinge or hit early and not lead with the left side. When you lead with the left side, the hands tend to stay in front of the club as you go through. And, and that's what makes you have trap the ball and makes you have good contact. When the right side beats you, the club comes up, you flip, and you either top it or you hit behind it. Now, to accomplish the proper swing on this shot, what I like to do uh, it is I like, I like to kind of face that target a little bit. You know, for instance, if I gave you a ball and said throw it, to me and hit this spot in my hand, you'd face me and throw it. You wouldn't face sideways and throw it because you'd lose feel and direction. So you can't face the target and hit a shot, but you can so-called half face the target and half face the ball. Uh, with your feet fairly close together on a short shot, 5-10 yards off the ground, off the green, and then getting a little wider as you go to maybe 20-25. But keep in mind that the narrow stance enables you to get a pretty good ball position without having it be real bad, okay? So when you stand open a little bit and you're holding a club and you're open, I feel like that ball, I can see my right foot, not my left foot. So I can see that that ball is just, uh, this, that, that ball is just ahead of the inside of my right heel. But really it's also, relative to my left foot, just about an inch to the right of my left foot. But I use the right foot as an anchor, or as a guide, because I can see my right foot. I have the ball in that position, just inside my right foot. I do not have a lot of hip back on this shot, which makes me lean over too much, and it, it makes it difficult to swing the club. So I, I, I keep my hips fairly the way they would be in life. It, it, my hips are the way they are in life. They're not stuck way back and I may bend my knees a little bit just to get down to the ball my right shoulder is lower than my left I'm holding the club 
with the same integrity that I would to hit a full shot. I waggle the club a little bit, a smaller waggle because it's a smaller shot with the left hand and the club tent starts to open a little bit and then when I and I'm holding the club very gently so that when, after I start my left shoulder and I get near the top of my swing, even if the top of the swing is right here or right wherever it is, this club will break a little bit before I return it. The wrist will break a little bit and that enables the, the, the hand to get what I call ahead of the club and lead the club. I don't believe in, in keeping the thing stiff all the way because I think that the right hand will beat you and push that way and I think that you also can't get the ball out of, out of a divot or out of a, a tight lie because you have to have the club up in the air a little bit to be able to hit down on it. Standing open to the shot, standing open to the shot also and standing with the hips not back but, but in, a, in a natural human position creates a channel for your hands to take the club back in. If my hips were way back here, there's a lot of room in here now, and my hands don't have a channel. They can go anywhere. But when my hips are in a normal position, like they are in life, then there's not much distance between my hands and my, and my body. And that creates a channel to provide the proper path with my arms and my hands relative to the target. Okay, and they don't have a lot of chance to go in and out. When the body is open, you can see that the club will, as I, and I start this swing, this swing with, a, with a, a motion of my left shoulder. When I start this swing, even if I'm only taking the club back this far, that left shoulder starts it, starts my left hand to get the club back that far. But when I'm half facing the target and I start and I start this this motion from this position, the club will tend to start straight away. If I was to stand around square, not only do I lose feel of the target, but when I stand when I start this motion, the club will tend to go inside. Now it's hard to get the club back on line going back. Also, when the st club starts inside, it stays too low. When the club starts straight away, it raises, and that raise is important to be able to hit to hit, hit a little bit down on the shot coupled with the fact that the left wrist does break or hinge a little bit and the hinging of the left wrist is it corresponds to how big the swing is because the bigger the swing the more centrifugal force you create meaning that if I take the club back to my waist I'm going to get more hinge than if I take the club back to my right leg that's about basically all there is to the shot uh, to review you have to pick out a third of the way that you want the ball to land and you want to visualize that and then you want to make a practice two or a practice swing or two or three for the swing to mimic or fall in line with the with the what you visualized okay you, it, to conform with what you visualized and that's important a visualization to get the club a couple practice swings to facilitate what you visualized and then you're into the shot okay and when you're into that shot you you just want to have that target in your mind's eye the third eye and either keep it while you're playing the shot or keep it up until the time that you're starting with the left side or blend the left shoulder and the target together which I think is probably the best way have both of them in your mind and blend them that way the target in your mind's eye controls how much of this you move I hope this helps you and that you're on the right track with this short shot. Thank you.